Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I'm Hidetaka Kobayashi, the director of the Agriculture Chemicals Office in the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries in Japan. I would like to thank the Crop Life AGA for giving me an opportunity to make a presentation. I would like to show you the overview of the rules for pesticide application with drones in Japan. Firstly, I would like to share the current situation of the agricultural sectors in Japan with you because it shows why we need to apply pesticides by drones. This is the statistics of the population and average of age of Japanese farmers. 20 years ago, the number of the farmers are more than 2 million, but now much smaller now. On the other hand, the average age of the, pop the farmers are increasing steeply and now very, very high. Actually, labor shortage and aging population is getting worse and worse in Japan, not only in agricultural sectors, but also in any other sectors as well, because the population in Japan is decreasing, but the agricultural sector is much more significant than others. Number and average ages of farmers in 2010 was almost 2 million, but now 1.4 million, so 30% decrease in 10 years. The age of farmers are quite high. Almost 70% of farmers are aged at 65 or more. In that situation, it is important to improve efficiency and unmanned aircraft such as drone may be one of the solutions. That's why we need drones for agriculture sectors. Aerial application of the pesticide was started in 1950s in Japan. At that moment, it was by done by the manned helicopters. It is suitable for larger plot and paddy field and forest. Then, in 1991, we introduced a manned helicopter, which is newer technology at that moment. Then, after that, five years ago, 2016, we introduced drones. Drone is, drones are much smaller than unmanned helicopters. So, it is suitable for smaller plot. In Japan, there are a lot of small plot, so it's quite suitable for this area, and also even in mountainous area, because in Japan, we have a lot of mountains. Also, fields for vegetable field, it is suitable. Area application of pesticide to paddy field is like that. In uh, 30 years ago, the, it was almost done by manned helicopter. But the ratio for manned helicopter is steeply decreasing to 2007 and then now almost zero. And on the other hand, unmanned helicopter is quite popular for that purpose. Now almost all area for area application of pesticide to paddy field was conducted by unmanned helicopter. Now we started using drones, but not so common for uh, paddy field. Actually, the area of paddy field is steeply decreasing as well in Japan. So, uh, but the ratio that's for the area for area application is almost the same. Now, when it comes to the safety considerations related to area application of pesticide, we have to consider two issues. One is safety of flight. The other one is safety of application. The first issue was to avoid collision. 
to avoid colliding with persons, buildings, or cars, or airplanes, whatever. The second issue is to prevent inappropriate applications, such as application on a place out of intended field. For the first issue about safety of flight, it is covered by the aviation law. Aviation law covers anything that flies uh, like uh, from small drones to big airplane. But anyway, according to the aviation law, generally, you can let UAV fly without any notification to or approval from authorities. This is general rule. But if it is near an airport or above populated areas like Tokyo or at an altitude higher than 150 meters, then notification to the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transportation, and Tourism is required. Then, if the UAV carries flammable or toxic materials, or if UAV releases anything in the air, or if you let UAV fly out of views of the operator or fly in the night time, in that case, approval must be obtained. Therefore, for aerial application of pesticide, approval of the government, MLIT, is legally required, always required. For approval, what was taken into account? First, the UAV model shall be confirmed by MLIT, the government, for the safety flight. Second, operators shall show higher than certain skill or knowledge of flying UAV. So operators has to be experienced and the operator has to take training. And a manual shall be created in line with the rule set by MLIT. The rule include that UAB, UAV should be checked daily. Operators should be well trained Flight details should be recorded, such as time, place, operators. And a person assisting the operator should watch flight conditions and weather and to prevent people from entering the area. In that case, it is approved. But in some situation, we want to let UAV fly without person assisting the operators. This is a little bit exceptional, but if only if the following conditions are met, it is allowed. First, buffer zone to prevent collision of UAV with persons or buildings or cars, etc. is set appropriately. So what is appropriate? Rise of buffer zone depends on the precision of GPS and the intended altitude of the UAV flight. So it's not a, a unified rule, but it depends on the flying plants and the characteristics of the UAV. Second, adequate measures should be taken to prevent a person from entering buffer zone, especially it's important for the farming, such as warning sign to prevent people from entering the application area and notification of the schedule of area application to neighborhood beforehand and in case that uav flies out of views of operators or in the night time flight should be under autopilot control it's not allowed for manual pilot Now, uh, we 
established new guidelines to promote appro appropriate aerial application of pesticides. The guideline is a reference for those who earlier apply pesticides by UAV to use pesticides safely and appropriately. Actually, according to the Japanese law, Article 25 of the Agriculture Chemicals Regulation Law, pesticide users are responsible to prevent damage to crops, human, livestock, environment, etc. So it is the pesticide user's responsibility to um, use the pesticide appropriately. And pesticide users should follow relevant notification by the government or by the local government to use pesticides appropriately and safely. These are the responsibility or duty of the pesticide users. So when planning area application of pesticides, pesticide users have to consider are there any plot where area application is inappropriate? If the plot is near the houses or public buildings or whatever, this, it is not appropriate to use uh, the pesticide area application of the pesticide. It's not so suitable. Are workers likely to enter the area very soon? If so, we can choose whether we do not apply the pesticide area or to change the workers' schedule or something. Then, we need to consider what kind of the pesticide is more appropriate. It means not only active ingredients, but also the formulation type is also important. In the guideline, it is also requested to use that, that to inform stakeholders near the application area prior to application. Stakeholder means not only the residents, but also schools or hospitals near the application area. It is always a problem in Japan because in many of the farms are quite near from the houses or schools, even schools or hospitals, whatever, in Japan. So it is quite imp uh, important, also it is quite problematic. So uh, the pesticide users have to take into account. The information should include date of application, purpose of application, pesticide to be used, and contact information of the persons uh, who is responsible for the application. Finally, it is also important to take into account the wind direction when applying the pesticide. If wind direction is not favorable, uh, the pesticide may go to such uh, the area of the uh, stakeholders. It is not suitable. It is not favorable. So wind direction should be taken into account. Uh, also, the wind speed is also important. So, what is the essential parameters for the application of the pesticide by drones? First, velocity of wind. If it is very windy on the day, it is not appropriate to apply pesticide by drones, obviously, even by any other means even, S because if the velocity of the wind is very high, in that case, pesticide go to the easily go to the other area, outer area than where it was intended. The next is velocity of UAV, also important. If the velocity of UAV is high, okay, you can finish work very quickly, but if the velocity is high, then the pesticide tend to go to the wider area than the normal speed. So, uh, the, to prevent application of pesticide outside the area where you, you are intending, it is important to keep the velocity of the UAV as 
um, plant. Spray wise is also important, but this is uh, rather than the characteristic of the nozzle of UAV, so it depends on the machine and altitude. Higher altitude result in the wider the application of pesticide in wider area. So altitude have to be uh, also in line with the plan. Otherwise, the pesticide will go outside the intended area. The next one is uh, pesticide regulations. In, according to the Japanese regulations about the pesticide, drone is considered as a pesticide sprayer, simply a pesticide sprayer. It means you can use drones because in the pesticide registration, the kind of sprayer is not specified. Just spray, for example, or drench or whatever, is written, registered, but with what measure it doesn't register. So there is no discrimination from other sprayers, like knapsack sprayers or speed sprayers. So you can use drones uh, if you can use the pesticide with sprayers. This is a fundamental rule. So you can spray pesticide from drones according to the registered gap. If you follow the registered gap, crop type, timing, concentration, then you can use drones for the pesticide application. However, generally, current gap may be inappropriate for application by drones because many of the pesticides in Japan, not only in Japan, but also in many countries, in Asian countries generally, dilution rate is very high, like 1,000 or 2,000 times. It results in high volume of application to the crop area, like uh, 3,000, 4,000, or even 7,000 liters per hectare. So, drones can carry little amount of pesticide, little amount of something. So, uh, drones cannot carry so much amount of the pesticide. So, it is better if the pesticide is higher concentration with smaller volume. It is favorable for drone application, but it is not the gap, the current gap in Japan. So pesticide makers may want to change dilution rate in the gap or add a new kind of the higher concentration gap. In that case, the pesticide makers have to request a change of the registration to the government. In that case, the government uh, evaluate the new gap, so uh, the pesticide company have to submit the data which is necessary for the evaluation. But as of 2019, if the application rate of the active ingredient is the same as the current registration for efficacy and residue, no additional data is required because these two can be evaluated with the data for original registration because the uh, uh, application rate of active ingredient does not change. So in that case, efficacy and residue are considered to be the same. So it's not necessary to uh, prepare new data for the uh, new gap with the higher concentration. On the other hand, for phytotoxicity, it is of concern because higher concentration uh, pesticide may damage the crops. So data is still required, but um, pot trial is okay. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. This is an overview of the uh, pesticide uh, application by drones in Japan. So questions and comments are welcome. Thank you.
Hi, good afternoon. It's me again, Chris, from the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. So for this session, our topic is Standard Operating Procedure for Pesticide Drone Application. So I will be uh, talking about our rules and regulations governing spraying through use of drones. So in line with FPA's mandate, our agency is tasked to protect the public from the improper pesticide usage, which presents serious risks to users, handlers, and the public in general because of the inherent toxicity of these compounds, which are also potential environmental contaminants. So FBA has the authority to determine the specific uses or manner of use for each pesticide or pesticide formulation. The agency also has the authority to establish and enforce tolerance levels and good agricultural practices for use of pesticides in raw agricultural commodities. And for that reason, FBA established some rules and regulations through Memorandum Circular last 2018 entitled uh, Good Agricultural Practices for Remotely Piloted Aircraft System for Use at Spraying. This document contains the rules and regulations governing drone spraying for agricultural purpose. The memorandum serves as a guideline for drone controllers and drone operator. With the set purpose, this may also be considered as our safety standard operating procedure. So this memorandum covers all controllers, operators, service providers, staff, pesticide companies, and other individuals or firms who are involved in activities concerning drone spraying of pesticides, including liquid fertilizers. To ensure safety in drone operations, we have few rules that must be practiced before, during, and after every operation. Included in the memorandum are number one, safety in procedures in pesticide drone spraying, safety in handling pesticides, and the post-application practices. For safety in drone spraying operations, first, all drones intended for pesticide application should have global positioning system equipment and other equipment including target flow controllers and, and flow meters. The drone operator must operate the unit in accordance with the operations manual. Flying altitude of drone sprayers is recommended to be one to three meters above the crop canopy. And it should be observed that the spray drip doesn't endure the neighboring crops outside the target area. There should be no spraying when there is an upward air movement or where the temperature inversion prevents the spray cloud settling within, within the treated area. And signage should be installed in strategic uh, points to warn the public and the surrounding community of spraying schedules. And to ensure safety in handling pesticide, pesticides to be used for drone spraying applications should be secured during transport. Emergency and first aid equipment should be available with the drone service provider and or the controller during pesticide application. Handling, mixing, loading, and application of pesticides should be in accordance with the pesticide label instructions. Absorbent materials such as sawdust or fine sand should be available for containing leaks and or spills. And clean water should be available at all times. 
For the safety procedures after spray operations, first spray equipment must be washed thoroughly inside and out and triple rinse in a concrete wash area. And the rinse liquid must be contained in a secured vessel for proper hazardous waste disposal. Likewise, materials used to contain leaks or spills should be properly disposed of as hazardous waste. And the used PPE should be thoroughly washed at the station's laundry area and must not be taken home after any use. So included in the post application procedure that must be followed is the documentation of every drone spraying operation. So a drone spray final report should be accomplished within 48 hours after spraying and kept for a period of two years by the drone operator. And the report must contain the following date and time of application, name of farmer or owner of farm, field size and location using GPS coordinates, total area sprayed, crops sprayed, and the target pests, wind speed at the time of spraying, information on the pesticide use, such as the brand name, active ingredient, and the registrant, total volume of the product use, dose, and rate of application, Tank mix information, if any, information on controller who undertook the spraying and the PPE used. So who are allowed to engage in this drone spraying operations? As I have discussed in the first session of this day one online forum, only the accredited and licensed by FDA. So first, Drone spraying operator must be FPA licensed. Second, the drone controller must be licensed by GAPA or the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines to operate commercially for pesticide application. And he or she must be an FPA certified pesticide applicator or CPA, hence he or she must be competent and knowledgeable in the use of pesticides. Thirdly, the spray operation crew must also be knowledgeable and should be fully conversant with drone operation and should have undergone training in safety on pesticide handling and the use of PPEs. Even she should should attend annual training or upgrading program coordinated with FPA. And for the spray crew supervisors should be accredited by the FPA as certified pesticide applicator or as ARCO or accredited responsible care officer. Hence must be knowledgeable and fully conversant with procedures in case of pesticide exposure. So not all pesticides can be used for drone application. Only FAA registered pesticide for drone application should be used. And a copy of safety data sheet should always be available in the spray site. Products should be properly labeled and be transported and stored in its original container and package. Container should be all regularly check for leak and damage. Only pesticides that will be used within the day's operation should be loaded into the transport vehicle and triple rinse empty containers should be disposed of in FBA authorized collection sites. So to ensure health safety among the workers, all personnel involved in pesticide handling and spray operation should undergo regular health check to include annual physical examinations. Number two, appropriate PPE should be worn at all times during spraying operations and personal hygiene should be observed. And finally, Annual safety seminar on handling of pesticide should be conducted in coordination and with pesticide 
the flyer, which be part of the pesticide registrants product stewardship program. Uh, so we all know that drone is a fast moving technology that is now being harnessed for agricultural purposes. So uh, FDA acknowledges the fact that in the coming years, our safety protocols, rules and regulations and implementing guidelines may have to be revised or modified for us the regulators to be able to adopt the changes and in changes and improvement in the drone technology. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Xun Xinyo from Bayer and I'm based in Yingnan, and I have 10 years safety experience, and I had a chance to represent the chair of Crop Life China, and the vice director of China Crop Protection Industry Association. And during that time, I had a chance to lead a group, a work group to develop uh, this association standard of strong CPU. Uh, from 2018 to 2019. So today I'm very appreciative and uh, very happy can be coming back to share the standard to you. And uh, there are three parts I will share you today. And the first is what about the drone stairship situation uh, currently in China? And the second is to show you a video about the drone safe use. Uh, this uh, looks like a SOP for drone safe application. And the last part, I will quickly show you what uh, we have done in Bear for promote the safe use of drone. Okay, uh, in China now, um, uh, first of the, the, first is the government regulation and the standard. Uh, for China now, is there has no uh, mandatory uh, regulation requirement on drone safe use, and uh, we only have one association safe use standard issued by CCPIA uh, in 2019. We have no um, industry standard. We have no uh, national uh, standard. So on the other hand. Uh, for the uh, drone safe use practice, uh, actually the farmer or the operate uh, have very low awareness on the safe use. And, but the good thing is now I see more and more people, farmer, uh, company, uh, association joining together to promote the safe use in China. And the CCPA and the Crop Life China to be the main uh, contributor to push forward and uh, to do the promotion on the safe use uh, recently here in China. Um, okay. Also, we see in the public uh, media, uh, we have got a lot of report about the drone uh, application te technology. Uh, we also uh, see uh, many uh, uh, reports uh, talking about how to safe use uh, the drone application. Okay, coming uh, to the standard, actually, um, uh, I had I established a work group in 2018 uh, 2019 to develop this associated standard. And we are very proud that the standard work group was honored by the China Crop Protection Industry Association uh, for our efforts in promoting safe use drone. And uh, we won an award at the annual China Agronomical Innovation uh, Contribution Award ceremony, ceremony in Shanghai 2020. So it was awarded as the Industry uh, Technical Innovation Contribution Award 
So uh, very important for us. So here I'm very uh, thanks the team member like Zhang Li and Holger from Bear, uh, Carrie Wang from the Zidunda, and uh, Pamela Wang from Cotiva, and also to uh, John Service Company, Nonfaker and the Nongjiang Guanjia Company. Also the successful collaboration bring us to achieve uh, this very successful milestone uh, for John CPU uh, in China. And actually, uh, we bear always be the leader in the drone CPU uh, in China uh, from uh, the 2018. We bear is the first company, a first uh, chemical uh, drug protection company to uh, public our guideline on a CPU drone. And uh, later on, we uh, joined together with the National Aviation Plant Protection Science and the Technology Innovation Alliance to uh, organize a forum and uh, to uh, announce this guideline for uh, industry uh, to reference. And later, the CCPIA uh, invite Bayer and uh, Xinjiang or Kutiwa join together, working together to, to, de to develop this uh, Associated Asian standard because at that time we have no industry standard, we have no national standard. So the association standard is very, very uh, critical to have, uh, to uh, can be used. Uh, and then uh, our uh, drone company or service company, our farmer can uh, reference to, to, to the standard how to uh, ensure to safe use the drone. And later we organized a lot of uh, training uh, regarding this uh, 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 associated Asian standard uh, by uh, 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 CCPIA, uh, jointly uh, by the Natast and the Gulf Life China. Also our Gulf Life China member company uh, largely to promote this standard in daily uh, promotion. So coming to the second part, I will show you the video. This uh, uh, simply, we simply translate uh, uh, into the uh, English. Uh, this video is originally used by uh, daily promotion uh, if uh, re relevant to the drone. So I hope you will, uh, will like it. Weather condition and requirement. Wind direction and velocity shall be measured at the height of 1.5 meters above ground. When it is greater than 5 meters per second, no operation. When greater than 3 meters per second, wait until velocity becomes below 3 meters per second. Do not apply chemical during periods of strong winds or before heavy rain or frost. The appropriate temperature is 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, and it is recommended to stay well below 38 degrees Celsius. No spraying during the humidity lower than 50%. In arid areas, it is necessary to make flexible decisions and choose optimum humidity conditions. Role and Responsibility of Safety Manager a safety manager should be arranged at the site to ensure the environmental safety and the safety of multi-rotor operators, supporting staff and bystanders. Implement emergency action plan in response of an accident. Set up a security cordon or warning sign at the scene to ensure the safety of visitors and bystanders. 4. The Operation Team Multi-rotor operators and supporting staff are responsible for multi-rotor operations to ensure the safe use of plant protection products. Multi-rotor operators are required to be trained and licensed and understand the law and regulations where they operate. The operation team is required to take part in safe use of pesticide training and obtain certificate. Get advice from plant protection companies for safe medication before operation. It is necessary to have common sense and ability to deal with pesticide poisoning accidents.
The multi-rotors installation and commissioning and test operation for at least 8 minutes are required to check whether there is a leak in the spraying system. The nozzle is in good working condition and the plant protection multi-rotor is running properly. The multi-rotors must be inspected and calibrated before spraying insecticide to ensure that the dosage is accurate. Before the solution is mixed, the operation team must read and understand the safety precautions in the labeling of plant protection products and follow their requirements. Two-step dilution and triple rinse of empty containers are standard operating procedures. Takeoff operation. Double check the weather condition before takeoff. Off-target application must be minimized. Spray drift loss can be limited by using low drift spray technology such as low drift nozzles and baffles to direct the airflow. The spraying operation is started once the operation process is confirmed. When spraying, the operation team shall always stay at the downwind end of the field and backlight direction to avoid the exposure of spray drift. Avoid having to walk through crop which has been contaminated by drifting spray. Set up warning signs in the spray area to remind people and livestock of safe access and no access to the plot. Things to note 1. Do not spray pesticides near water sources less than 200 meters. Do not pollute water sources by misusing pesticides. 2. Do not spray, especially insecticides, during honeybee activity or honey collecting. Avoid spray drift to flowering nectar crop. 3. When spraying pesticides that are toxic to non-target organisms such as fish, birds, and silkworm, strictly abide by the product label requirements and take effective measures to avoid risks. Step 5. Post-Operation Processing Waste liquid produced by residual liquid, cleaning equipment, and PPEs should be diluted further and sprayed onto the discard area or recycled to avoid polluting the water. Send triple rinsed containers to the nearest approved collection site. Never leave empty containers in the field or burn or bury hazardous waste. After spraying pesticides, take a shower and put on clean clothes. Multi-rotor operators and supporting staff. No drinks within eight hours preceding operation of multi-rotors. Timely evacuation once the operation is completed. Timely cleaning body parts exposed to pesticides before drinking, eating, and smoking. Careful cleaning with focus on face, eyes, mouth, nose, and hands. Okay, after showing you the video, I would like only highlight some uh, very important part. Uh, firstly, it's a role and a responsibility. I strongly recommend uh, there is one uh, people or one staff to be responsible for the safety during the application. Since drone application sometimes uh, usually uh, have two people working here, so one people are responsible for the operation, another people should be take care of the safety. Uh, include your human safety, I mean operator safety, and also include the environment and the crop safety. And uh, uh, for the weather condition, uh, I think all we know the weather condition is very, uh, very important. And the weather always be the driving factor um, on the safe use uh, of drone, especially for the wind speed. Uh, we recommend it's less three uh, meter per second uh, should be better for drone safe use, especially uh, to manage the drift issue. Uh, for other part, um, I think it's a uh, uh, it's a similar like we use the conventional uh, application uh, technology, uh, like we buy uh, the product or transport and the storage temporarily of the uh, product. It's completely same as we use the backup spray or boom spray, uh, where PPE uh, glove 
and uh, we how to manage the empty container triple rings uh, and manage the container probably and uh, uh, work in hand or uh, have a solver after the application, uh, nothing special, um, but it's also uh, should be take, uh, take uh, care uh, about your uh, operator safety and the environment safety. Um, uh, for the PPE, I would like to highlight that the, the element should be uh, mandatory for drone operator and uh, navigator or uh, some people closely uh, want to close the observe the drones of, uh, application. Um, for other things, for the environment safety, uh, Okay, I think uh, for the stereotype mitigation is similar, but uh, for if you use drone, you especially to take care of the B uh, issue and the aquatic uh, issue. Uh, for use some herbicide or some product very toxic to B or very toxic to aquatic organism, you should be very, very uh, careful uh, because the drift issue is uh, high. So you should think about, uh, think about how to manage the drift issue, like uh, use the low drift nozzle or add some, uh, add some uh, adjuvant uh, or slow uh, the uh, speed uh, or lower the uh, uh, application high. Uh, anyway, you should think about how to manage the drift issue if you use the drone. Is very important. And the last part I would like to quickly show you how what we have done in there for the promote the drone safety use. Uh, actually, in the past three years, we have do a lot of activities. Uh, first is uh, addressing addressing uh, the R safety concern. We have closely collaborated with uh, Natas. Uh, government like uh, uh, ECOMA uh, on the communicate, uh, technical communication and the policy understand. Of course, the Cop Life China is doing uh, well uh, to leverage the, 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 the experts and the authority to uh, sitting together to discuss how to develop the drone uh, safely in China. And we internally organize a lot of training, include the TTT training and the, to the training to our technical extension team, the training to our sales team, uh, the training to our marketing uh, colleagues. And also externally, we have organized a lot of program together with the CCPIA, Cop Life China, and the NATAS, uh, ICAMA, um, to, uh, to promote this uh, safe use. Also, we are training a lot to our uh, partner, like uh, our dealer, our uh, uh, retailer, and uh, also include the training to our uh, partner, like uh, a drone uh, company and the service company. Uh, we uh, always think about uh, think uh, about how to use this kind of technology safely. Uh, not only uh, for the product selling, but also ensure this uh, business uh, going on the safe, uh, safe uh, way and the sustainable way. Uh, some pictures to show you about uh, our activity, like the farmer training, uh, the forum together with the uh, uh, government or association. Uh, and also include our sales team uh, uh, training trainer program. Okay, uh, that's all uh, about it today. Uh, uh, my uh, association standard, and uh, thank you all. Uh, if you have some question, we can discuss later. Weather condition and requirement. Wind direction and velocity shall be measured at the height of 1.5 meters above ground. When it is greater than 5 meters per second, no operation. When greater than 3 meters per second, wait until velocity becomes below 3 meters per second. 
Do not apply chemical during periods of strong winds or before heavy rain or frost. The appropriate temperature is 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, and it is recommended to stay well below 38 degrees Celsius. No spraying during the humidity lower than 50%. In arid areas, it is necessary to make flexible decisions and choose optimum humidity conditions. Role and Responsibility of Safety Manager A safety manager should be arranged at the site to ensure the environmental safety and the safety of multi-rotor operators, supporting staff and bystanders. Implement Emergency Action Plan in response of an accident. Set up a security cordon or warning sign at the scene to ensure the safety of visitors and bystanders. 4. The Operation Team Multi-rotor operators and supporting staff are responsible for multi-rotor operations to ensure the safe use of plant protection products. Multi-rotor operators are required to be trained and licensed and understand the law and regulations where they operate. The operation team is required to take part in safe use of pesticide training and obtain certificate. Get advice from plant protection companies for safe medication before operation. It is necessary to have common sense and ability to deal with pesticide poisoning accidents. The multi-rotors installation and commissioning and test operation for at least 8 minutes are required to check whether there is a leak in the spraying system. The nozzle is in good working condition and the plant protection multi-rotor is running properly. The multi-rotors must be inspected and calibrated before spraying insecticide to ensure that the dosage is accurate. Before the solution is mixed, the operation team must read and understand the safety precautions in the labeling of plant protection products and follow their requirements. Two-step dilution and triple rinse of empty containers are standard operating procedures. Takeoff operation. Double check the weather condition before takeoff. Off-target application must be minimized. Spray drift loss can be limited by using low drift spray technology such as low drift nozzles and baffles to direct the airflow. The spraying operation is started once the operation process is confirmed. When spraying, the operation team shall always stay at the downwind end of the field and backlight direction to avoid the exposure of spray drift. Avoid having to walk through crop which has been contaminated by drifting spray. Set up warning signs in the spray area to remind people and livestock of safe access and no access to the plot. Things to note. 1. Do not spray pesticides near water sources less than 200 meters. Do not pollute water sources by misusing pesticides. 2. Do not spray, especially insecticides, during honeybee activity or honey collecting. Avoid spray drift to flowering nectar crop. 3. When spraying pesticides that are toxic to non-target organisms such as fish, birds, and silkworm, strictly abide by the product label requirements and take effective measures to avoid risks. Step 5. Post-operation processing. Waste liquid produced by residual liquid, cleaning equipment, and PPEs should be diluted further and sprayed onto the discard area or recycled to avoid polluting the water. Send triple rinsed containers to the nearest approved collection site. Never leave empty containers in the field or burn or bury hazardous waste. After spraying pesticides, take a shower and put on clean clothes. Multi-rotor operators and supporting staff. No drinks within eight hours preceding operation of multi-rotors. Timely evacuation once the operation is completed. Timely cleaning body parts exposed to pesticides before drinking, eating, and smoking. Careful cleaning with focus on face, eyes, mouth, nose, and hands.
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So it's my pleasure to share with you the uh, safety considerations in best practice for uh, UAV-based application. And I'm Ray, uh, the application scientist for APAC Corteva and responsible for uh, application technology through product development to launch. Uh, also, uh, I serve as application technology focal point to enable drone application capability and adoption. So firstly, I'd like to introduce Corteva, my company. Corteva means a heart of nature. So we are a multinational companies with strong global footprints. Um, we have uh, 20, more than 20,000 uh, plus employees in more than 130 countries. We have a broad offering with more than 65 active ingredients and strong presence in world's uh, major agricultural areas. Our purpose is to enrich the lives of those who produce and those who consume, ensuring progress for generations to come. And when uh, we talking about a safety in UAV based application, so um, the UAV operator uh, may uh, also may include observer per requirement is the one to uh, observe and also implement safety precautions, regardless how well uh, developed the UAV system and automation. So that means um, a, U a UAV operators is required and also is responsible for the uh, safety. Successful uh, spray application starts uh, with a well-trained operator and uh, uh, to use uh, proper judgment on sensitive crops, for example, um, uh, sensitive crops downwind and also the wind limits is uh, critical for the uh, operators. That is to say uh, they need to uh, have proper judgment on a field condition. And also uh, a follow pre-flight checklist, such as uh, crew briefing uh, of the operation and ensure uh, spray equipment is well calibrated and well connected to the uh, remote control is very important. And also to, uh, for example, checking area for non-participants and the potential hazard. And it's uh, also re uh, the uh, responsibility for the UAV operators to observe the spray equipment uh, is working properly during each flight. Next step is uh, some safety aspects uh, we need to consider in a spray procedure. Uh, for example, in spray preparation stage, physical compatibility of the uh, pesticide uh, is very important and also agitation needs to be considered as well. And in the stage of uh, the droplet move to the target crop, drift may cause damage, not only to non-target crop, uh, but also to human and also environment if it is not managed. After the spray, there are also a uh, clean out of the equipment needed so I'll have uh, following slides to elaborate in, uh, in details. So talking about uh, physical compatibility, uh, you know, the pesticide concentration is higher than uh, conventional knapsack. For example, uh, normally it's 30 to 45 times higher than uh, knapsack. So more uh, potential risk of incompatibility because um, People are using it at a very high, uh, high uh, concentration level. And also the tank mix compatibility for a knapsack would be uh, uh, incompatible at the drone dilution rate. And the second point is uh, physical compatibility may cause like a precipitation, flocculation, and also persistent foaming. As shown in the below picture, we can see that because of incompatibility, the uh, precipitation formed. And when we dump the uh, uh, bulk into, into a uh, paper cotton, we can see that a lot of the chemicals are precipitated at the bottom. And also we can uh, see that from the picture fail to do so, uh, the blockage of the uh, sieve is observed. So this will block the filter, for example, also stress the pump and it leads to non-uniform spray. It uh, poses potential safety risks in the operation. 
And the physical compatibility is critical in, prepar uh, in preparing spray mixture, uh, physical compatibility and the spray burn. I uh, prepare a uh, spray mixture. Another point is about a uh, bark tank preparation. It is common for operators to prepare bark uh, dilution for a whole day spray, for example. So they can uh, take a portion out and load it to drone tank for each flight. However, uh, there's a, a lack of constant agitation in the bulk tank. Uh, you, can, you can see the below picture. Usually they just use the bulk tank and there, uh, there's a no uh, agitate, agitation mechanisms. So dilution may precipitate after long standing time causing uh, blocking or AI unevenness in the spray as shown in the right uh, photo, uh, showing that uh, there's a sediment at the bottom. So uh, that means the AI is not even a distribution uh, distribute in a spray solution. And uh, it is typical situation for ACC and WG formulations because of the particle size. Uh, deposited materials will uh, result in, for example, low AI rates and inconsistent uh, product performance in the field. So uh, in this part, constant agitation during the operation by machine or thorough resus uh, resuspension manually is required. Another important point is uh, drift control. So uh, drift is a threat to non-target crops, uh, not only to the crops, but also to the operators and the environment. So you, you can see from the below picture, there's a, a crop response caused by uh, drone drift. And as for the operators and observers, if they're not well equipped with PPE, they may be exposed uh, to the spray mist that produced by the drone. And another thing is uh, uh, drift damage to the uh, to the living organisms. For example, in some of the paddy field, uh, the farmers grow uh, crayfish together with the rice. And in this case, if the pesticide that is toxic to the uh, crayfish drift to the adjacent field, uh, the living organisms might die. And the second point is to um, identify variables that related to drift. For example, the droplet size, the flying attitude of the UAV, and also the wind speed. Uh, as well as operators, of course, are key factors influencing uh, drift. So mitigation is needed for spray uh, products of drift risks. And also um, it is um, for the operators to keep that in mind and also to take necessary uh, precautions and uh, measure measurements. All right. So uh, the operator is in position to recognize, record, and also implement method to control drift, such as control the variables to reduce drift. Uh, here listed three key variables related to drift, uh, like the application height. So in another word, it's uh, the flying attitude, wind speed, and droplet size. And right table shows the impact of each variables on drift distance. For example, increasing uh, release height and, all, and also the wind speed will increase downwind uh, deposition, increase the uh, drift distance, and also increased droplet size will decrease the drift distance. At the last stage is about uh, tank and drone clean out. So a high concentration means high residue in tank and also spray system, taking into consideration it's uh, 30 times higher concentration, uh, concentration than uh, conventional uh, sprayers. So the consequence of non-thorough uh, cleaning may cause crop damage, incompatibility in the following spray, and also the irregular tank shape increased difficulty in clean out, need uh, introduced circulation or shaking mechanism in cleaning. And also UAV is exposed to spray mix and may be contaminated with chemicals. If not properly cleaned, may bring chemical exposure to operators and their, uh, the maintenance person. So tank and the drone clean out is required after spraying. Do thorough cleaning or use separate tank. Okay, so the last part is about the summary of my part. And here I listed several points, ownership of spray operator, 
training and refreshment should be reinforced and the pre-flight checklist and ensure tank mix compatibility. And the last but not uh, the, the least is thorough cleaning tank when switching products or different crops. Okay, I think that's all for my part. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pamela Wang from Corteva. I'm field scientist and uh, Asia Pacific coordinator of joint application digital agriculture of integrated field science. It's great pleasure for me to introduce techno technical feasibility exploration of Corteva products by joint application. Uh, what we did in terms of joint application. As a world leading agrochemical company, Corteva is endeavoring to explore our products by joint application since 2016. Uh, we are trying to provide robust and scientific best application practices to growers by solid field trials, and by deep collaboration with industrial government leading scientists, and by deep understanding new technology. We are trying to push forward the healthy food development of joint application and thus to push forward precision agriculture and modernization of agriculture by providing outstanding products and new technology to farmers. So we explored technical feasibility of our products by joint application. We generated the best application practices for several products. We generated and published national general standards by jointly cooperation with CCPIA. And we held a joint application workshop and training, not only at country level, but at regional level. And also we gave public trainings by cooperation with DGI and XAG. In terms of technical feasibility exploration, we evaluated and confirmed the technical feasibility by joint application for a can to wheat on rice and wheat, for pack pack salt on rice, for rinsco on rice, for Zovac in Kentia on potato, for delegate on corn, and for queen lax on wheat since 2016. We proved that all products showed very good technical feasibility by joint application based on two to five years, more than 180 internal field trials and the deposition a drift study by cooperation with the leading universities. Now I will give you several examples of the performance of drone application. The first is queen legs against wheat, wheat control. As you can see, queen legs by drone application showed very good performance and it is uh, comparable with uh, backpack application. And this is untreated check. Similarly, we can find that a can showed very good field performance against a rice for smart control by drone application, which is comparable to backpack application. And similarly, we, we found Zovac in Kentia showed very good performance against a potato late blight control by drone application, which is comparable to backpack application too. For delegates, it's spinatrum. Spinatron by drug application still showed very good control efficacy against a corn for armyworm control, which is also comparable to backpack application. So based on those trials, we proved all the tested products of Corteva showed very good technical feasibility by drug application, and it is comparable with backpack application. But we also found that best efficacy performance can be achieved only if Farmers can follow our technical positioning and other direction for use directly when they're using our products by joint application. So in order to ensure farmer can use our products effectively and safely and correctly, so internally we generated the best application practices on a canto way in Kentia and Queen Lakes in China. Externally, we jointly generated participated and published corn, wheat, rice, and other general national guidelines by cooperated with CCPIA and other MNC companies. And for Corteva, we lead the corn general national standards. 
Now I will take Zovac in Kenti as an example to, to introduce BAP, which we generated. For a BAP, we think that a product attributes, technical position, and uh, parameters that is including environmental parameters and uh, application parameters are the core part of the BAP. So I will give a very brief introduction of the three aspects. First, uh, the product attributes. Why is all in Kentia can show very good technical feasibility by drone application? That is because it has very suitable formulation. It showed very good physical compatibility and crop safety attributes. It has very good um, superior and intrinsic systemic activity, which can ensure full protection to crops um, and uh, ensure superior rain fastness and uh, can also protect the new growth of plant. And also we proved that uh, Zovac in Kentia can show very good performance without uh, adding, adding some classic adjuvants. Besides product attributes, technical position is also very important. Farmer needs to strictly follow technical position to ensure the best performance. So for Zovac in Kentia, it should be applied at 165 GH with two to three preventive applications at seven days interval. And uh, probably start the application at first vegetative growth stage and or row closure stage, which is about 25 to 40 days after uh, seedling emergence stage. Now I will talk about the recommended parameters environmental parameters and flying and equipment setup parameters. We are recommended to using our products at the feasible wind speed, which is less than three meters per second, and avoid to apply when there's no wind too. Um, and avoid to apply Zovac in Kentia when the relative humidity is low and the temperature is high, and, also, and, and the same to other unfavorable conditions. We recommended the water volume is larger than 22.5 liters per hectare. And uh, we recommended uh, to use representative and use the type of drones from DJI and XAJ to do the application. And for the flying height, flying speed, small weights, uh, recommended is follow the recommendations from drone manufacturers, but use slower speed and uh, use narrow small weights. For the flying mode, autonomous flying mode is preferred, or the M plus mode is secondly preferred on the tomato on the potato like light control. Others is that avoid a missing application, follow the correct tank mixing procedure, and follow the correct rinse um, procedure. And after the application, proper record for the application information is needed. And the highly skilled pilots is uh, recommended to be used. Besides the technical feasibility exploration work, I will take one minute to highlight other activities which Cotava did. As I mentioned just now, we held Asia Pacific and uh, several countries joint application workshop from 2019 and 2020. We will continue to do this work. We discussed the development status, existing problems, and development directions of U.S. application technology from the perspective of technology policies and market. Also, we licensed and trained pilots in several countries by cooperating with DJI. Take Yu Fengying, the joint drone application training in China as an example. We licensed more than 30 pilots at a time in 2019. We also held public trainings or classes by cooperated with DGI and XAJ since 2018. Professional plant protection knowledge and drone application knowledge was, uh, um, was, was uh, introduced. And also we published our drone application brochures in last two years. Finally, I want to take a moment to introduce recommendations for UAV operator training and the certification requirements, which were generated by CropLife Asia. Thank you, CropLife Asia, give me the chance to introduce this. This guidance document aims to provide recommendations on the knowledge and skills required 
of the operators to be licensed to operate pesticides application safely and effectively. In the SOP, K training topics are listed like laws and regulations, operational technician, technical knowledge, SOP for safe pesticide application, and pesticide knowledge. I think it's a very good reference and a very good SOP, which can provide strong technical guidance to farmers and industrials. So that's all. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Zheng Ya uh, from Momentivo. Uh, uh, I am an advanced uh, application development engineer in agriculture. Uh, I'm from Momentivo. Momentivo is a global lead silicon company. Uh, for today, I will uh, introduce the uh, topic, the challenge we face in the growing spread. So I will share my screen. Uh, okay, share my screen. Uh, this is the uh, my screen. Uh, can anyone can see it? Okay. Yes. Uh, before I introduce the, the uh, topic today, I would like to give a very quick brief introduction of Momentivus Agriculture uh, business in China. Um, Momentivus, uh, as, just as I said, is a global leader in silicon technology. We have uh, we are transferring from uh, G Toshiba and uh, uh, Bear Silicon, OSI Silicon together. So we have uh, 60 officers in 25 countries. Um, and for the agriculture, we have line factories. Uh, in China, we are in Nantong, uh, Jiangsu province. Uh, here is the global leader uh, position we are uh, on the market. For example, in course, we are the number one leader in the course business. And for the uh, others, uh, for example, for the city king, we are the number two. And for some others, we are uh, leading the marketing, marketing for the uh, <coughs> over 80% of its revenue based on those uh, uh, leading posi uh, market positions. Uh, here is our diversified customers. Through this, you can see uh, we our customer is not only from agriculture, but also, for example, the personal care, P and and some industrial, 3M, and others. So, so, so then you also can hear it that silicon is a, a vitamin for um, the industrial. So our customers uh, is very diversified. It is in all, in all the global uh, food port, uh, in all the global, you can find our customers. Uh, here is the global trend as we are doing the, um, fact, uh, we are focused on the agriculture. We do that with the population continuous growth from 17 billion to 90 billion uh, by the end of 2050. Our farmer, our farmland is very limited and the water is really shortage. So we, and also some, uh, country, uh, some uh, people move to the uh, countries. We need to fit all these uh, people, uh, person with a sustainable uh, 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 production, using the less water and the less farmland to fit more people. So then comes uh, our uh, cover protection. That means what we can do from a crop protection uh, side. With our new uh, active technology, for example, the new AI to control the pest or the disease. But it's not only the uh, AI, the I mean that the pesticide can do, it only uh, it also needs the adjuvant help from um, the mixing, the beginning of the uh, tank, mi tank mix to the delivery, deposition, coverage, and uptaking. All the spray period needs our uh, adjuvant help on the new AI or uh, pesticide to help it uh, get better uh, performance, more efficiency on disease and uh, pest control. Here is the, uh, what we think, which is uh, the best uh, performance adjuvant, the characters it needs. For the uh, uh, adjuvant, it needs super, uh, super spreading and adhesion. 
especially for some very long spread volume uh, uh, long spread volume uh, application, especially for the uh, joint spread and others, you need to anti the uh, uh, drift and anti the evaporation to increase the uh, deposition of the droplet and others uh, for the better form control and uh, good compatibility. Those are especially uh, important uh, during the production period. So we need to use the preferred uh, agent to deliver more active. Here is the uh, summer uh, uh, portfolio uh, we uh, momentum have, especially you can see on through Google score, COH, Agro Spread, and the SH Empty Form. Those three are our branding on the market. This is the quick brief introduction of Momentum and its uh, agriculture advent application. Uh, but what we face the, uh, the challenge with the drone spread right now, uh, before I introduce the challenge, I want to share the advent we are using our on the market. As we all know that uh, until uh, there is also the uh, four type of uh, spread, joint spread advent is oils, uh, especially the vegetable oils, the polymer, the surfactant, and the silicones. We, but the oil covers 80% of the total the joint advent market. But what is the key influence uh, in factors uh, our joint spread? There's only three factors. We consider it as the temperature, the wind, the moisture. Uh, for from our large uh, tremendous field experience, we think that if the wind speed is less than 5.4 meters per uh, second and the temperature is less than 37 uh, degree and the moisture is not than 50 percent is suitable for the joint spread. For the other conditions, it is not very good for the joint spread. So considering those uh, uh, <coughs> In factors, uh, key factors for the drawing, we need to know what's the difference between the drawing and the conventional spread. As we know, for the drawing spread, it's really use very, very long spread volume. It can only 10 to 50 meters per hectare. Conventional, uh, conventional uh, spread, conventional is usually uh, at least 225 meters per hectare. So with such long, uh, spray volume, we need the super spreading to get the bad coverage of the uh, for the crops protection. And the other way is for the higher concentration. And because we using the uh, same dosage of the um, pesticide in one hectare, we just uh, cut down the spray volume. So the concentration is really huge. Uh, really very higher than the conventional one. So it will cause a lot of compatibility problems. So for the advent, it needs to uh, get a better compatibility uh, solution for the pesticides, which several different types of pesticides, including the insecticide, the fungicide, maybe including some fertilizer together to uh, get better compatibility for uh, the different type of uh, pesticide application. And the third one is the very fine the droplets. For the conventional uh, um, droplet, uh, conventional spray, the droplet is usually larger than 300 uh, milliliters. But for the joint spray, is, oh, the droplet size is only 80 to 100, uh, 100. Uh, millimeters. So with this smaller drop size, it's very hard to uh, adhesion on the um, curves. So we need to increase its adhesion and get a better deposition for uh, on the uh, uh, curves. For the last one is the evaporation and the, uh, drift. As we know, the end of the conventional spray, the is usually the head. The spray head is among 30 to 50 centimeters, but for the drawing, is range from one meter to two meters, really very high. So as those long, higher, uh, uh, very long, high, higher length head, 
you need to care about the evaporation and the drift. So this is the difference uh, of the drawing and the conventional spray. With this uh, um, only characters for the drawing, it will cause, I just show some pictures. For example, this one is for the incompatibility. After you tank mix the several different type of pesticide, especially when you add some fertilizer in it. The other one is for the evaporation. You can see with the uh, drawing, it can cause a huge evaporation. And the other way is for the uh, long coverage. We add some dial in the pesticide. After the spray, you can see it very clearly on the rice leaves. You can see the coverage is uh, very long, just uh, a few <coughs> Just a few things, uh, the density is very long on the rice leaves. But also if you spread some herbicide, you can find that it can cause some drift. See, this picture shows the drift call, uh, uh, the drift on the lot uh, lotus leaves. It can cause very serious phototoxicity. So with this challenge of the joint spread, we need what is the key requirement for the joint spread agent. First one is to get better compatibility. Just as I said, the farmers that don't use a single, single pesticide to spread, they use uh, at least three or five, even uh, more than five different types of pesticide tank mix to get uh, once a time. So you need to, the advent can adjust the compatibility of those different types of pesticide. The other way is for the anti evaporation and anti drift. You need to increase the adhesion. Uh, get a better uh, increase in adhesion, get a better deposition. And with super spreading, you can get better coverage. And the other way, control the pen uh, penetration. As we do, some pesticides that have, good, uh, have a poor penetration. With Advent, you can get a better penetration. So, what we really need the Advent to do is to increase the pesticide efficiency and ensure the performance during the drawing spray. So for the uh, Advent performance, uh, just as I said, what we need the Advent performance, the anti-reparation, the anti-drift, and uh, the get the better coverage, um, get to uh, uh, improve the compatibility. Those are the Adjuvant can performance during the joint spread. So let's see some examples. Here is the compatibility with our, our product, COVID R16. You can, from this picture, just the 20 minutes after tank mix. Uh, for example, I just give one example. This uh, look my, and my mouse. Here is with our COVID uh, R16. This one is with COVID R16. You can find a lot of summer. Uh, Suspension, suspension after a uh, tank mix. So this is the uh, uh, pictures shows that with some um, adjuvant, you can adjust the suspension during after tank mix. So I prepare some uh, videos for uh, for the uh, online chronicles. You can find it very clear. We just using the uh, has this uh, fungicide side plus with the water and the one is plus uh, with the co wet R16, the other is with half co wet I16. We can find that with co wet I16, the suspension is uh, better than the, the one with after our co wet R16. Oh, I need to mute the presentation. Uh, so you can see this one is uh, with uh, uh, this one is the front side plus the fertilizer with after COVID, uh, COVID R16. So after the tank mix, we can see that this one, sorry.
we can say that uh, with RCOVS R60, its suspension on in the uh, its suspension, you can see it quite clearly, but uh, here is with R60, is the suspension is very well. So we find that fungicide can not only, uh, sorry, the element can not only improve the perform uh, the control efficiency ensure ensure performance, it also can improve the uh, compatibility of the uh, during the tank mix. So you can see this one is after the fungicide and uh, fertilizer, you can see after a little shaking, you can find that the suspension is the same as the previous one, the fungicide plus the fertilizer plus the R16. You can see now the suspension is very well. So for the adjuvant, you need to uh, find the uh, uh, solution for the compatibility during the high uh, dosage tank mix. Uh, here is the last uh, um, field trial for the different uh, conditions. For example, and the Zhenyang um, city, you can find the temperature ranges from three to five degrees. The wind speed from 0 0.3 to 3.4 meters per uh, second. The deposition coverage is 45.71%. Uh, 45 but, and the Lanzhang city, the condition, uh, condition is very severe. So after you add the uh, adjuvant, the deposition increase more nearly up 20% than Zhenyang uh, location. So we can find that even in Wugang, the temperature is much higher and the speed is very large. So the deposition can increase much more than the pesticide single application. So I just like I said that the pest, the adjuvant is the insurance for the bad deposition and severe uh, different uh, uh, very severe conditions. So <clears throat> here I want to introduce a, a last uh, product, COVID target, just as, as I said, you have seen the COVID I-16, Agus Berlinton, COVID DIX-16, low one, uh, <clears throat> there's a low one adjuvant can cover all the uh, characters we need during the um, practice application. So we need one adjuvant to cover all the problems we faced during the uh, application. So we launched a new product, CLA Target. Here is some uh, particle size we tested in the lab. You can see for the water single application, the DV15 is very uh, small, but when you add the silver target from 0.1% to 1%, we can increase the DV15 uh, uh, very uh, significantly than the water single application. So that means the bigger, the huger the DV15, uh, the larger uh, size of the uh, droplet. So that can have a better uh, performance during the anti-evaporation and anti-drift. So here is uh, some uh, uh, <coughs> data we tested. For example, just to see the coverage and the deposition. We find that with the COH target, it can increase the coverage there is a past, uh, water single application, um, not design, nearly 6% uh, increase. It has a significant difference. For the deposition, uh, without uh, adjuvant, is only 0 0.18. Uh, <clears throat> but with the COVID target, it can increase nearly 0.6%. Uh, wind meters per uh, centimeters. So that increased a lot for COVID targeted single application. So 
we are folks uh, we are considering the joint spread as a drawing we are taking the uh, we invented the new generation of the drawing joint spread element this is uh, including the momentum patent technology uh, especially designed for the multiply drawing application as we know some uh, countries especially in the north america or in some uh, our Brazil is using a lot is using a single wing drawing, not like, like others. We use a multi or wing drawing. The other one is uh, it has a long dynamic substantiation, which means the long the substantiation, the better the adhesion, and with good anti drift and anti evaporation to improve the deposition. Very environmental friendly without OP or NP spectrum, long form and better compatibility. So the, uh, the last one is uh, the conclusion, the adjuvant can do. The adjuvant you are using it on the joint spray is to ensure the quality of the spray, which means increasing the droplet size to get better uh, uh, anti-evaporation and anti-drift. And the other one is ensure the performance of the pesticide and very severe conditions. So using the uh, element, it can make the spread quality much better and get the better performance uh, for the pesticide. So this is all for my uh, presentation. Thank you. If you have any question, we can discuss it on the line or you can follow me. Thank you.